Hi, so <clears throat> the first thing I wanted to continue with is probably um, this. So it seems as if Camex Beam is producing <laughs> this Flying Cooper. What is the opposite here? The dolphins seem to be entering the moon or jumping towards the moon. Now, on this side we have a double mm, echoing with this fish seemingly it, it's got these little zeds as if it's sleeping and like the rays of the beam they produce the Cooper. So it's almost as if the fish is dreaming of this flying Cooper. What could that be? Well, in some of my other analyses of Mario cover art, one of the themes that often accompanies this whole Kundalini thing is evolution. Evolution sort of of species from uh, fish to reptiles to mammals um, and and so on to humans. So it almost seems as if the fish is dreaming of being free from the sea and they're f and flying up in the air, being a turtle, something that can leave the confines of the water and walk on the land. Here, I guess, represented as flying. The cape uh, could be the shell of the turtle. So. Of course, here the dolphins are doing the same. They're jumping out of the water and flying, becoming a flying creature. What does this mean for the rest of the picture? Well, here we have a flying turtle, Lakitu, the one who was um, pulling the mushroom, or alternatively, of course, helping the mushroom descend down to Yoshi, using the mushroom as bait to fish Yoshi out of the water. But here, again, in dream logic, we have a sort of a, a play on words because Yoshi is being born out of a shell. Yoshi is leaving the shell behind. Here, the turtle, which usually wears a shell, is leaving the shell behind to fly. Okay, let's keep that in mind and um, move to another section of the of the image. Here, obscured by the letters is clearly Bowser's face in the form of some sort of rocky island sticking out of the sea. And on this rocky island, again obscured by the letters, is clearly a castle. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, a fortress. Bowser's castle, and here this looks like a flag, a red flag, on top of the castle. Something seems to be happening here. I'm not sure what it is. It could be some sort of a explosion or something. It's hard to see. And a star here. Um, I think in, in one of my previous analyses, the one called Cap Palace, I already mentioned this uh, repetition of the symbols of the star and the moon. The star in, op in opposition to the moon could be potentially a, um, a sun, a star as in the sun, sun, moon, being next to the castle. And in that video, I also put the image of the castle or the palace on top of the head. Here, Bowser's stone head has a castle on top of it. It's almost as if the castle is the cap, the hat, of the head, and then eventually a red flag arising at the very top of this. Mm. Anyhow, the the what comes to mind for me when seeing this image is that Bowser here is present. His presence is here. His presence is in the drawing. 
We have Mario, we have Bowser, we have the hero, we have the enemy. But he is not actually Bowser, he's only symbolically Bowser. This is a stone statue. But what if that's what all that Bowser is? Maybe Bowser is a shell, as I think I've also explored in another video. This idea that Bowser is literally the shell of matter, and Mario being in some way the, the spark, the divine spark animating matter. Where matter in itself isn't bad, but the, the um, clinging on to matter, clinging on to desires, the, the, like in a Zen kind of way, the, the whole thing of mm, not letting life flow and mm, stul stultifying it sort of in thought. <laughs> would be what what this Bowser fortress could potentially be. The fortress of the ego, essentially. And yet, um, so, anyway, too many things going on at once. We have Bowser as this fortress opposed to the other cap um, mushroom island. And of course, uh, there seems to be a day and night motif here. So, okay. First of all, the way this wave is designed into the layout, we have this ray kind of goes perfectly into Yoshi's body, which is also like in an S shape, and then whoop, it turns into this. So it's dividing the globe almost exactly like a yin-yang. We have this part of the yin-yang and this part. This part being the darker, shadowy part, where Bowser is, and this part being the brighter side. This part having the moon, this part potentially being the sun. So, we have um, the water globally representing the unconscious, but within the duality of the yin yang, we could also have this bottom part being the unconscious and the top part being consciousness. So, something is emerging from unconsciousness. The, the drawing, in a sense, is very repetitive when seen through this analysis, of course, which is all my perspective at the moment. Um, is very repetitive. It's always the same motif. It's a motif of enlightenment, or waking up, or kundalini um, awakening. It, it, it seems to be the same idea over and over and over again. For example, here we see another little dragon uh, firing a ball of fire into the sky next to a palm tree. The palm tree is also mythologically related to the, the Kundalini experience in that it is the, the, the crown opening up, the lotus flower opening up mythologically, and here the fire, the dragon, the Kundalini fire, ascending up. Right next to it we have, again, really obscured, one of those um, worm enemies, I can't remember what the name is, with a flower on its head, again representing the lotus flower opening up in the crown. This motif appears in Mario games again in, uh, for example, Super Mario Sunshine, where the piantas have flowers emerging out of their heads. It's as if the Mario universe is particularly steeped in um, Kundalini symbolism for some reason, or, and this is a theory that I guess would deserve another video, is that since these games are old games, games that are nostalgic for me and for other people, 
it is not the game so much, but our nostalgia from the present, from the year 2016, looking back towards the 90s, that allows our unconscious to project this symbolism onto the image, that maybe there is something about nostalgia that stimulates symbolism to emerge in the form of projection onto, onto media of one's childhood. Since the, ch the period of childhood is, you know, in theory, the closest period to um, Buddhahood, if you can say it that way, that we have in our lives, which then grows more and more uh, harder, like the Bowser Fortress, as you age. So why this repetition? It's almost as if the repetition is a mantra, the way you, the word is just repeated again and again and again to keep you awake or to, or to wake you up. It's almost as if the repetition of themes about awakening are precisely intended to awake, whether they are included in this artwork itself or not. But again, I guess that's another video. Uh, so in, in any case, it's interesting because a few things start to combine here. The, um, the dolphins jumping to the moon remind me very much of Super Mario Land 2. The cover art shows Mario in his bunny suit jumping towards the moon. Uh, and I think my knowledge of Kabbalah is very limited, but this made me think of the passage from, uh, I think, Malkuth to Yesod, I think it is. Um, and in that sense, I guess, could represent, in a way, an, in, an initial first step towards a union with the unconscious. I'm not sure. That, I'm not really too sure about that. Oh, I, I did want to mention, though, that the red flag coming out of Bowser's castle seems to be coming out of his head like the flame rising up from the dragon, again, Bowser being the dragon, and the red cap of Mario. This is like a, a triangle, in a sense. Mm. So we're jumping to the moon. The moon being a mirror, maybe representing um, the... the reflection, entering into the world as reflection, or entering into an awareness of world as reflection. Uh, so, why the fish? But initially we have the, the idea of evolution, of fishes evolving, but, but I think there is also a symbolic side to this, which could have to do with why um, the fish is the, the is such a prominent figure in Christianity, for example, in Christian mysticism, or why Jonah is trapped in the whale, inside of a whale, in, again, the, the biblic uh, fable, as being the whale itself, or the, the inside of the whale, representing itself, uh, Phys the physical world, the physical world in its most dead aspect, the, 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 the aspect that l lets the flame of consciousness breathe very little. In that sense, being dreamt by a whale could also be you are literally inside the whale's dream, like in Zelda Link's Awakening, where you are inside the dream of a whale which cracks open its egg. So, so all of these things, they not only reappear throughout world mythologies, but they reappear through uh, Nintendo games themselves as well. Mm. In any case, I think I'm going to leave it at this for the time being. There are other elements which intrigue me. The bombs, of course, I've mentioned, I've not mentioned at all. This guy I've not mentioned at all. I think his positioning is very interesting, right here at Yoshi's belly. 
Um, but I'm going to leave it at that for the time being. Um, oh, one final thought, though, is, is this mountain with its little crown is another sort of crown symbolism. It's crown of clouds. Uh, anyhow, thanks for watching.